The Charmot's Dilemma A Recount of the Neverain's Dialectic with Dagothur After the Neverain and Dagothur discussed their identities and plans for Kagranak's tools in the heart, they turned their attention to the deeper matters, namely their justifications. Dagothur defends his actions as the altruistic actions of a god. He states his belief that gods are nihilistic entities and therefore not subject to the morality of mortals, but instead entitled to create their own morality. He believes his position to be the more conservative one and the more just one. The Neverine defends the right of people to create their own destiny, the morality of mortals, and believes his position will free the Dunmer, if not now, then in the future. This dialogue was reconstructed by first-hand accounts of the Neverine to the scribes of the dissident priests, and through the mediums of Azura. Now, if you have any more questions, ask them. Otherwise, you are the challenger, so to you goes the courtesy of the first blow. Vorin, my old friend, if you can still be called by that name, we have discussed the particulars of our desires for the future. This much is true. However, I feel much is missing. We know what we want, if we are truly honest men, but not why. My memory of my past incarnation is as hazy as the waters of oblivion, but I know one thing for certain. What I know is that you are not the just High Counselor and Warrior I remember. It was you who warned us of Kagranak's project with the Divine Council of Azura. It was you who advised their immediate destruction. Can you not see that that which you fought against has corrupted you? Do you take the mindset of the Dwemer and their chief tonal architect, Kagranak? Indoril, I pity you for your short-sightedness. If only you had dreamed with me under the mountain. You confirm my mistrust through your short-sightedness. You're still bound by your superstitions. You're Azura's tool, and she has used you as she planned to use me. Why is it that you believe a life of servitude? Servitude to the false gods of the Tribunal, servitude to the Empire, and servitude to the Daedric lords who pull their strings is better than what I have to offer. Perhaps, Vorin, you are right in a certain sense. This is certainly the truth in your mind. You have seen reality more clearly than mere mortals see reality. But it is a great blunder for a god to expect mortals to share their perspective. The Dwemer made the same mistake through their studies, and at least in this timeline, they no longer exist on Nern. Do you wish for our race to become like the Dwemer? You underestimate your Mer brethren, Nerevar. Do you not see the power I have shared with them? Do you not see the truth they have come to know, the oneness they all share? Our minds are connected, Nerevar, in more ways than you can imagine. You could imagine it, perhaps, if you would dream. We are asleep even when we are awake. Would you choose the mundaneness of Nern over the grand and complete world of Arbus? Nerevar, you are me. This is what you fail to see. Or you can at least become one with me. Come surrender Wraithguard, Keening, and Sunder. Perhaps there is hope for you yet. I have seen much in my travels, Varin. I have seen the effects of your project. I have seen men, women, and children who, through your so-called divine touch, can no longer be regarded as such. I have seen those who suffer in fire's corpusarium. Perhaps to you this is a gift you have given them, but not a gift they have asked to be given. You have shared suffering and death, is this the price of your enlightenment? I see you weep for the fate of mortals as I do. One can pity the weak, but it is not in my nature or in the tradition of our people to shelter them, Nerevar. I, like the Tribunal and the Empire, have used the tools I have at my disposal. The Blightstorms were but one of these tools. As for your assertion that I have given something that has not been asked for, I believe you are mistaken. What mortal does not seek to be liberated from their selves on some level? Is it not wrong to let them live in a lie? Yes, it is true that all beings on this plane seek liberation. They seek liberation from death and suffering, which you have given to many. I value the truth as you do, Dagathar, but I do not see it as my place to force such truths on others. 
If these are the only tools at your disposal, and you choose to use them, perhaps hoping you can offer something better once you gain more tools, then I think you are dishonest. It is for yourself that you act, not on behalf of the Dunmer and the other races of Nern. I admit, Nerofar, that you have made a good point. It is true that I act for myself. But this is a fact of all beings, whether they be gods or mortals, Aedra or Daedra, men or mer. You do not see it as your place to free others from their superstitions. This is your choice, Nerevar, and you have chosen as the false gods of the Tribunal have chosen. I am disappointed in your lack of ambition. I have decided it is my place and my right to share the Divine Dream World and to see the universe as I wish to see it. Why is this wrong? Is this not what a true god does? Why is it better to leave people with their illusions? You have forgotten so much of what it means and feels like to be mortal, yet I cannot see you as a true god any more than I can see the Tribunal as true gods. What admirable god needs tools? You cannot claim it is your right when you have not earned it. Come, Varin, my old friend. The heart of Lorcan has corrupted your conscience. You have betrayed me my trust and request for several epochs. Cast this corruption aside, I beg of you. And the Daedra, who tool with mortals for eternity, have earned it? I do not concern myself with subjectivities, Lord Nerevar. I tire of that world. It has limited us greatly. You and others cling to it in fear. Gods have always used tools. You are a tool of Azure, are you not? As for your ancient request for me to safeguard the tools and hear while you decide what should be done with them, have I not done just that, at least with concern to what I have in my possession? It so happens that to keep them safe and to fulfill what you and all mortals truly want, I could not surrender them to you, Vavek, Alex Amelia or Sothasil? We were wrong to view these genius tools as threats. I have decided this. Perhaps I am just a tool, a tool of Azura, and to a lesser extent even Uriel Septim. But I have at least chosen this path. I am not like your servants who come to you through dream compulsions, who you must infect to convert. You have distorted my desires. You think it is I who am confused in what I want. But it is you, Dagother. Yes, I have used dreams and tactics that might be considered evil by some. As I stated earlier, this is the price of war, and from waging war I can form a new peace greater than the Empire, Tribunal, or any god has imagined. You are a fool to think that you are not influenced by the broadcasted dreams of God. Has Azura not given you dreams? Have they not caused you to act as you do now? I, too, have sent you dreams. It is a pity you do not see their merits. Yes, I have been granted visions by Azura. I have played a part in their prophecy. It is a funny observation to Goth that you who claim to be omniscient do not know the outcome. Is this an instance of Dragon Break that makes the future uncertain? Azura's dreams allowed me to rest easy. Your dreams have the character of nightmares. You have become a trickster like Lorcan. Perhaps it is that god which pulls your strings. What a shame it is that you cannot see beyond the duality of mortals. You see black and white where all is gray. You see nightmares and pleasant dreams, but there's just dreams. I can liberate you and everyone from this uncertainty you speak of. Not without war, not without suffering. Yet no great change is made without such phenomenon. Now, I must ask you an important question. Do you know of Chim? Yes. Then you know of the power it grants to those who learn it truly. Yes, I am well versed in these matters. Then you should know what I wish to share, and you should know why I say that the desires of all beings are my desires. We are all one. I dream as Lorcan dreamed, and I shall not make his mistakes. I have become the center. I do not think it vain to wish to be all things, and in a sense, I am. Once I complete a Kulakan, this vision can be realized completely, as Tiber Septim realized his empire with the first Nemidium. 
I am not the Lord to Goth, you remember this is true. But this is not a bad truth. You are not the Lord Inderil Nerevar, I remember, who wished to advance the power of himself and his people. You are weak. You have accepted limitations as morals. I will not. But this is not the nature of Chimvarin. How can you be everything when you yourself know yourself to be a part in the wheel? Do I not exist as I am and as we? Interesting perspective, Lord Nerevar. It has been a long time since someone has engaged me truly, but I refuse to see it that way. The Godhead is disorganized, chaotic. This world as it is is only a world of hatred, of chaos and disorder. True love is peace, and violence is a God's way of expressing love. As long as I live, I will strive to realize this program. But do you truly live, Varin? Are you not but a shade of your former self? I am here, am I not? This conversation is growing tiresome. In the end, actions decide who is right and wrong, not words. Do you have any more questions? We have unlimited time, but I have no desire to use it all debating the merits of the morals of gods versus the morals of mortals. I think I understand now, Dagather. I think I know what you want, and I can help grant you it. I loved you once as a comrade, High Counselor Dagoth. We together will free the Dunmer from the false gods of the Tribunal and set the stage for the Empire's decline. You have seen the grand picture, but you do not know the details. Let us fight. Very well, if that is what you believe. You are the challenger. To you goes the courtesy of the first blow. <laughs>